All right, so today we're going to be talking about uh, a new report that has come out about Switch that's very promising for next year and uh, even promising for this year for Nintendo purposes. But next year for us as consumers, oh man, there's some reason to be pretty excited. But before we get into that, I got to remind you of our giveaways. So we have two specific giveaways going on right now, separate giveaways, uh, but still on the channel, six total winners. First giveaway is for a Switch Lite and then two games of choice for second place winners. So like if you win second place, there'll be two different winners that can win a Switch game of choice. Grand prize is a Switch Lite. Uh, to enter that giveaway, go down to, down into the description. There's a whole bunch of ways. Commenting, liking the video, subscribing to the channel, hitting that bell icon, uh, join, uh, following on Twitter, uh, and subs uh, following, uh, going to Discord as well, and, and joining our Discord server. Uh, and also, by the way, patreoncom slash Prime for one dollar a month or more, uh, you can get 15 entries into uh, this giveaway and all future giveaways. Now, moving beyond that. We have a second giveaway for Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Uh, that giveaway, you enter through a gleam.io link down in the description. Also, as well, Patreon can get you some extra entries as well. So keep that in mind. All right, let's move on to the story. So over here, you see an article by Bloomberg. It says Nintendo boosts Switch production by another 20%. So the general gist of this, because I'm not going to go over the entire article. Uh, I will link it down in the description. But the general gist of this is that Nintendo has increased production from 25 million to 30 million for this fiscal year, which, by the way, this fiscal year runs through March. March 31st of next year. That's how Nintendo runs their fiscal years. So right now, uh, as of August, they supposedly updated their, their production to 25 million. But now they have asked uh, the people making switches to increase production to 120% so they can hit 30 million. That does kind of suggest that 100% production is set at 20 million a year. So they increased, you know, to, to 25 and now they're going up to 30 million. Now, this just comes from sources that Bloomberg has uh, inside the manufacturing. This is also where we've heard all of the rumors uh, and reports about uh, a next gen switch next year, better screen, 4K, all that jazz. All a lot of this came from Bloomberg, uh, but there's been then uh, screen exo screen technology that we factually know Nintendo has a contract with them, but doesn't have a system with that technology in it yet. There's a lot of things that kind of connect the dots that show Nintendo has something in the works a Switch Pro, a next gen switch, whatever. But there's some different sources this time around on a 4K switch. Yes, folks, we're talking 4K switch. Let me go to the bottom of this article. It's the last paragraph. Uh, sorry, maybe not the last paragraph. It's uh, right here. It's right here. So the introduction of a more affordable Switch light variant in late 2019 helped broaden the machine's potential audience. And Nintendo is making preparations for an upgraded Switch model and beefed up games lineup for 2021. Now, we've talked about how Nintendo's going to have a lot of games next year because they didn't have a lot this year. Even like Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, that's not a Nintendo-made game. It's an exciting game, and I'm pumped, but it's not made by Nintendo. Nintendo themselves has to have a ton of content ready for 2021. And this kind of suggests that that is the case. But Bloomberg News has reported on that. Now, several outside game developers, so outside game developers, so third-party game developers, speaking anonymously as the issue is private, a.k.a. they're under NDA, said that Nintendo has asked them to make their games 4K ready, suggesting a resolution upgrade is on its way. Let me repeat that again. Several outside game developers speaking anonymously as the issue is private, said that Nintendo has asked them to make their games 4K ready, suggesting a resolution upgrade is on the way. So we're not talking about inside manufacturers like we have in the past. You know, it's not it's not people on the assembly lines like we, we've, the, what Bloomberg and Wall Street Journal and other companies have referenced in the past. It is game developers now saying that Nintendo's telling them to be 4K ready. Now, there's going to be more uh, to it than Nintendo just telling them 4K ready. For starters, they're going to already have dev units of this. Period. If this thing's coming early next year, like the report suggests that it's going to be an early release in 2021, potentially on Switch's birthday, for all we know, uh, Breath of the Wild's birthday as well, that uh, they're obviously going to have dev units already. So to say make your games 4K ready, I know some people are going to be like, there's going to be a 4K Switch. I can't see Nintendo releasing a native 4K Switch because right now native 4K requires like PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X levels of power. You're not fitting that in a Switch. Not realistically. Not anytime soon. Down, you know, years down the line, a decade from now, sure. But right now, there's no way that technology exists that is even remotely close to affordable or runs at a good heat profile to hold in your hands. Now, setting that aside, that doesn't mean 4K won't be possible. 
there's two different ways Nintendo can go about 4K. One of it is with DLSS 2.0. Uh, DLSS 2.0 is a feature set for NVIDIA GPUs of the 2000 series and higher. So basically ones that have RTX tensor cores, because it's an RTX tensor core exclusive feature uh, that allows for dynamic resolution upscaling and uh, including uh, also increases to frame rates without affecting performance. So instead of using um, RTX cores to do ray tracing, which is what, you know, the most popular feature of those RTX cores that we, that's always talked about is ray tracing. You can instead take those cores, which don't really do anything else but that ray tracing, and put the power of those cores to use for upscaling and for improved frame rates. Now, you might be like, well, okay, that's great, but I mean, I've seen, you know, games, you know, our TVs upscale games, right? So what's the difference? Well, let me put it this way. It has been shown in games like Control, and I'm actually showing you that some of that footage right now, that 720p upscale to 4K with DLSS 2.0 is near indiscernible to humans. The difference between native 4K and that 720p upscale. Now, one reason that you have trouble getting assets ready, because you'd be like, if they can if they can already do that to existing games, then what the hell? Well, there's 4K assets that already exist for a control. So there's a lot of resources it can pull from. So as you're playing Control on your PC, the 4K assets are already part of it. So as you're using DLSS 2.0, it has references it could draw upon potentially. So what 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 is this going to do for a game that might not include those 4K assets? So because because to include the 4K assets is going to make the games massive. I mean, there's no way 32 gigs on a Switch. I mean, heck. Uh, Breath of the Wild 2, if it had 4K assets, would end up being maybe potentially more than 30 gigs. Like 4K assets are massive. I know that just from doing 4K video footage, let alone 4K image files. But uh, what I will say is DLSS 2.0, uh, with some tweaked images that are potentially ready for something like that, uh, could make a difference. I, I've, I've actually talked to a few uh, developers, uh, art directors specifically that work on visuals and uh, making art assets. And they have talked about how there are actually visual enhancement tweaks you can make to even lower resolution stuff that won't appear in the, in the lower resolution that will become clear with the LSS 2.0 enabled. So something, I'm not sure what it is because I'm not an art designer, a graphic designer, uh, but there's something about DLS 2.0 that like you can make it so the game looks as it normally would, but there's extra stuff in those assets that isn't available unless it's upscaled properly. Uh, and DLSS 2.0 right now is considered the best upscaler in the entire world and obviously increased frame rates. So getting an extra 30 FPS on your games uh, without having to affect the base performance of the game is pretty crazy. Uh, and yeah, chances are 1080p is still going to be a thing. Uh, might even be 1080p portable, depending on how much power they pack in the Switch. Now, the other way they could do it is to obviously uh, have a dock, have a new dock anyways, that either currently adds more power with a GPU and upscales the current Switch uh, that is, we, we've seen that with the supplemental computing device. That's been something suggested. Bloomberg doesn't seem to be going down that road. They seem to suggest it's going to be a new model switch, new screen, all that jazz. So it, it's talking something that's like a more powerful switch, more so than a more powerful dock. Uh, but yeah, and you might be wondering, well, how can they get RTX tensor cores? Well, we know for a fact, for a fact that NVIDIA has been working on a Volta-based Tegra chip with DLSS 2.0 in mind. This is important because you might think, oh, they're working on that Volta-based Tegra chip for smart cars, for self-driving cars, right? Because the Tegra chips, or what was the Tegra X2, technically doesn't exist as the X2, but what was going to be the Tegra X2 has been put in the smart cars for navigation and self-driving. So I'd be like, so what the hell does it matter? They could just be working on another you know, Volta-based one for that. They could be, but DLSS 2.0 would have nothing to do with it. They would not need a graphic upscaler and frame rate buffer, you know, increaser to, to for, for smart cars. It, it just wouldn't be needed. Now you can say, oh, but they're going to game in there. Yeah, yeah, sure, they can. But that's not really the point. You can game in a Tesla too. It's not really the point. People don't buy a Tesla to play games. All right. So like when you're buying, uh, when you look at these Volta GPUs, clearly the development is for Nintendo Switch. We know this factually exists. We know it's factually being created. We know Nintendo has a partnership with NVIDIA. We know that NVIDIA Tegra Tech is what's inside the Switch. Things are lining up to suggest that next year we're getting a Switch Pro, bare minimum, if not an entirely new generation of Switch. Uh, and when I say new gen, I don't think Nintendo's ever going to act like it replaces the current Switch. Like, oh my gosh, you get this and now nothing's going to come to the old Switch. I think it's going to be, be one of those, uh, hey, phone generation things you have an iphone 11 well things still work on the iphone x 
Like, it's okay. Uh, it's not like things don't work on the iPhone 8 anymore. But things will run better and look better on the latest. And I think that's the, the whole pitch for it is, hey, if you want to look better on your TV, if you want uh, to look better even in portable mode, if you want a more premium device, here you go. But don't worry, all the games are still going to work on the OG. Now, that doesn't mean third-party games. There won't be some third-party games exclusive. As an example, uh, I still haven't talked about it yet, but the Kingdom Hearts people have put out some really lame excuses for why none of the Kingdom Hearts games and the mainline games can come to Switch. But like, if this thing exists, well, it can come to that platform. Now, I don't expect that, that support to be widespread until there's a bigger install base for this. And we'll see. Uh, this is also Nintendo's way to potentially compete with the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X without having to have something that's powerful in them, have something that's like a quarter or less, not like even less, like, like you know, a couple teraflops or something, and still be able to uh, get performance that looks on par with those systems would be really impressive for Nintendo. DLS is 2.0, I can't stress it, is such an amazing tech. There's no way that that's not being developed for the next Switch. And again, according to Bloomberg, next year, 4K, they're asking third-party developers to have have their games ready to support this technology so crazy all right folks i am nathaniel robogents from nintendo prime thank you for tuning in man this channel has been popping off lately lots of videos lots of views you guys are awesome and amazing uh, i'm glad to see uh you know even as i'm in college here and, and, and busting my butt i'm glad to see that you guys are as interested or maybe more interested than ever in the content i'm putting out there so thank you for that i'll catch you guys uh, in the next video